So we started a series, just a, just a, a short series on the book of Jonah, and a, a wonderful, beautiful book of Jonah. And um, I think that's where a lot of us find ourselves in. You know, I think we read through Jonah, we, we just read about a man who was swallowed up by a fish, but it's so much, so much more, it's so in-depth, it's, it's, it's about understanding, truly understanding, um, you know, why this book was included in the Bible. And it, it, is, it is, can I say it's so encouraging that the book of Jonah, it's challenging, but yet encouraging. And, um, and so the, uh, we, we started off when uh, we did the f- whole first chapter last week. And, um, and as we know that the, the book of Jonah was written around about 17, 740, 58 year, uh, years before Christ. It was written to a man um, who was called by God to go to a city called Nineveh or Nineveh, whatever you, how you want to pronounce it. I mean, if you're truly English, you'll say Nineveh. If you're, uh, if you're Afrikaans English like me, it's Nineveh, Nineveh. You know who? I mean, doesn't matter. You just need to know that that's the capital city in the, in the, in the olden days or the, or the Old Testament Assyria. It's the new, in, in, in our modern world, it'll be northern Iraq. And he was called to that nation to actually bring a word to that nation. And it is so important that we need to understand because I believe that this book is so applicable in the day and age that we're living in. That at this time, um, the nation of, of Assyria... Um, they were brutal, violent, pagan people. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. They were terrible, and I mean really terrible. And the word of, word of God says in John, Jonah 1, I'm just giving you just a quick recap. Jonah 1 verse 1, it says, The Lord, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittia. Go up, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it. And we all know what, what, what Jonah did. Jonah decided that he's going to be the judge. And I was just thinking about that this week. How would we judge people if the baton was in our hands? Isn't that what we do constantly every single day? Every single day we judge people by by face value, by the way they walk, by the way they talk, what they do, how they live, what they say, how they don't say. We judge, we frequently judge So I thought this, if I had to be a judge, how would I judge? And then all of a sudden, this came to me. Well, God looks at you, Edwin. How would he judge you if you you judge people with the same measure stick and he uses the same measure, measure stick towards you? And all of a sudden I said, thank you, Lord, that I'm not the judge. And I'm not here to judge. Church, we're not here to judge. We're here to live. We're here to encourage And the book of Jonah is all about that. But it's about being called to understand you and I are called to be witnesses. He calls us to witness, listen, to show people, listen, that even in your your worst state, that there is a way out. And his name is Jesus. That he paid a price for us on the cross of Calvary. And it was a full price. That there's nothing that the blood of Christ does not cover. Yet, here comes Jonah and Jonah, in his own way of thinking and, and uh, way of doing things, he decided, this, he, that, you know what, I'm going to judge them. I'm going to be prejudiced. I'm going to do it this way. So God calls him to Nineveh. Nineveh he goes to, to Tarshish. And we all know, got in the boat, and God caused the storm. And uh, ach, we all know the story. And they, the lot fell on, on, on Jonah and and, and, and and then they threw him over into the sea, thrown overboard into the sea. And we ended last week with, now the Lord had arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside of the fish for three days and three nights. I, I hope you're getting it. You gotta, you, you, listen, you've got to read the word deeper. Because what God did, God arranged and this is maybe a prophetic word for someone this morning. I say prophetic, but it's not prophetic. It's just, it's just a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Listen, God has already arranged for your provision. God has already arranged so that, so that, listen, you can come back and be in line with his word. God has already arranged that. He's already got a fish ready for you. Someone needs to hear that this morning. That God's got a fish really arranged for you. 
J.P. Morland said this beautiful quote. He said, when God chooses to create somebody, he or she has an impact on, uh, uh, on other pe- uh, people's uh, choices. And it might be that they have an impact on their decisions to trust Christ or not. Ish. And this is what Jonah did. So, let's get into to, to the book of Jonah. We're going to start with chapter 2 from verse 1. Then Jonah prayed, and, and this whole chapter 2 is about Jonah's prayer to God. So, he swallowed, I mean, listen, how nice and comfortable it would have been in the belly of the fish. Who loves sushi? I mean, it's like sushi nonstop. It's like, it's like, it's like, um, um, Bottomless sushi, <laughs> if I can call it bottomless. But it's like sushi, having sushi the whole time. But not just sushi. I mean, what about all the other fish that's rotting inside of the stomach of this, of this fish? He was in a terrible place. I want you to get that. He wasn't in a good spot. He was, he was really he was at a, in a bad place. Okay, you got it now. And so when we read this, I just want to just put you in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mind frame. So, so the fish was actually Jonah's salvation. And when he cries out and he prays, is when he was thrown overboard and he was, he was in the water. I mean, thrown overboard is stormy. You don't know what's going to happen. And you are, you're about to drown. Get that into your heart. It says, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, um, to the Lord, he's God, from inside the fish. And this is what he said. And I want you to read this portion with me. It's on the board. I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. Wow. You see, in our greatest distress, in our greatest troubles, in our greatest situations and circumstances of life, God hears our prayers. I've heard it so many times that people would say to me, but Edwin, it feels like my prayers are hitting the ceiling. I want to encourage you this morning. You you need to keep on praying and keep on trusting God. Your prayers are not hitting the ceiling. Maybe God is just taking you through something so that you can build something within you that you can be more steadfast and stable in your walk with God. I know you don't want to hear that. You're actually here for the good sermon. Well, this is the good sermon. Because we need to understand, listen, God answers our prayer. I called to you from the land of the dead because he thought he was dying. And the Lord, uh, and the Lord you hurt me. You threw me into the, and into the ocean's depths. And I sank down to the heart of the sea. And the mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath uh, your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. Yet I will look once more towards your holy temple. Oh man, Lord, may we hear that. Oh, in our greatest situation, Lord, I'm going to do it once, once more. I'm going, to, I'm going to call to you once more. Verse 5, I sank beneath the waves and the waters, uh, waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. Listen, he was in a dark spot and sank down to the very roots of the mountain. I was imprisoned in the, um, in the earth whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord... Do you know, I love it when the Word of God says, but you. I love the buts, because there's time that we need to experience the buts of God. But God. This happened in my life, but God. I was going this way, but God. I felt so downcasted, but God. This was not working for me, but God. We need to find the but gods. Listen, in our lives. But you, O Lord, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies, but I will offer sacrifices to you with song, listen, with song and with praise, gratefulness. Lord, I might be in the situation. Lord, it's not nice. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I don't know. It feels like my my prayers are hitting the ceiling. But Lord, I know with confidence that you've already prepared and salvation for me. You've already prepared a way out for me. And then he says, I will fulfill my vows. I will actually do what you've called me to do for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. I love verse, verse, verse 10. It says, then the Lord ordered the fish. 
and he was spewed out on the beach. Listen, I love it. It's like, it's like God arranged the fish, and now you come to a place of repentance, and now he says, listen, let's, let's do it again. And you need, to, you need to hear that, because in, in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver this message I have given you. He's the God of second chances. You need to hear that this morning. Someone needs to hear that whatever you've done, whatever you've gone through in this life, He's the God of second chances. There's always another chance worth with God. And so quickly, there are seven things, seven things that we need to, and I'm going to run through them, seven things that we need to understand. Firstly, God answers our cries of distress, listen, from the belly of the fish, listen, we, even when we are guilty. Jonah ran away. He was disobedient. How many of us have made bad choices in life? Isn't it so? Even in our worst situation, we are guilty. But yeah, listen, he cried out to God. Jonah was, 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 was listen, he didn't, he didn't listen. He, he was disobedient. 1 Samuel 13 says, so beautiful, he says, he says um, uh, 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 obedience is better than sacrifice. When we obey, we don't have to, have to sacrifice because now you've got to get it right again. Now you've got to take a couple of steps back. But listen, disobedience happens to us all. Our lack of faith. And I just want to say it this morning. I believe that every single one of us, me included, we're guilty. We stand guilty before God. But listen, when there was no hope, it says that Jonah cried out to God in his distress because there is hope. There's no situation that God cannot change. You have not drifted so, so far away that God cannot get you. And yet, listen, can I remind you of Psalm 139? David, David declares, he says, I, I, I go to the depths of the earth to get away from God. But yet, there's you, I mean, you found me. Adam and Eve tried to, to hide away in the Garden of Eden. Listen, you cannot hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. So can I help you quickly? Stop. And let God just catch you up. Because he's inviting you, like the prodigal son, come home. Come home. You might be guilty, but come home. Yes, you've made a bad choice, but come home. I'm the God of the second chances. I'm awaiting your return with open, stretched arms. There's nothing that you can do. Listen, that'll change my love for you. Romans 8, 28. Nothing in heaven or on earth or in the sea, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. I need to say this to you. God loves you. Even in your time of being guilty. Do you think, just quickly, do you think that God didn't know that Jonah was going to do this? That's why we, we, we read it. He arranged the fish. He arranged the storm. God knew. So even in, in the times of, of, of being guilty, when we're distressed, we need to call out to God. And maybe that's, the, that's maybe one of the worst times to cry out to God for ourselves because we think that God will not hear us. But I'm guilty. How can God hear me? No, he's just waiting for you to return. He's just waiting for you to return. Listen to Psalm 107, verses 10 to 15. It says, Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor, heaviness on them. They fell down with none to help. They cried out, cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. With the heaviness of this world, He delivered them. He brought them, out, brought them out of darkness and of gloom and broke their bonds. Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wonderful works to the sons of men. Church, even if we're guilty, listen, he comes and he shows us a way out. Amen. Do you know what we need to do? It's actually very simple. It's called repentance. And I believe we don't like the word repentance when it comes to church. Listen, repentance should be the second word in your list. Gratefulness, the first word. Repentance, the second one. Lord, I repent. It's not just about, um, you know, coming to a place where I regret what I've done. 
or have remorse what I've done. But Lord, I'm, I'm going to metanoia. I'm going to, I'm, listen, I, I'm going to repent, which simply means, Lord, I've done this. Lord, forgive me. And you turn your back on it. You've got to hear what I'm saying to you this morning. You've got to turn your back on it and walk a different way. The problem is this, is that we, we don't turn our backs. We become like Lot's wife. And you know what? You can be crystallized in your problems and in your situation when you keep on looking back. What God is inviting us in, He says, come on, all you need to do is repent. And then you turn around and you walk away. Why? Because I've already paid a price. Does God agree with sin? No, never. But has He made a way for us? Yes, He has. Do we live in a, in a grace period? Yes, we do. We don't wake up in the morning wanting to sin, but inevitably the taxi will drive in front of you. And you might use some higher grade English, at a mancha English words. The very higher grade. Listen, there's a way out. And his name is Jesus. Secondly, secondly, secondly. Sometimes we go through this and it feels like God is judging us. I hear this frequently. I believe that God at this moment, ek word gestraf. Can I just encourage you? The wrath of God was settled on the cross of Calvary. God is not angry with you. Come on church, he's not angry with you. It was settled with the blood of his son. The sacrifice, what Jesus did, settled God's wrath on you and me. We need to understand that because, listen, he's not angry. Does he agree on what we do now and again? No, definitely not. You see, we as, we as God's children, we're not sinless, but we sin less. That's, I mean, that's, that's what we wake up in the morning and what are we going to do? I'm going to sin less. My father-in-law used to tell me this. He says, he says, I just came to salvation and he says, listen, it's like, you know that concertina um, files that you used to get? He says, you used to sin a lot and then you, and then you, as you grow with the Lord, the periods between what you're doing, why? Because you're sinning less. You're becoming more aware of his presence. You become more aware of who he is because we've got his spirit and his spirit, listen, his spirit helps us, it guides us, it leads us and it convicts us. How many times have, have the voice and the Spirit of God spoken to you and you have not done it? You just know that God was speaking to you. But we need to understand, He's not judging us. He's not judging us. I love Hebrews 12. What He does do is, I need to say this to you, He uses the circumstances of what we find ourselves in so that you and I can be disciplined and formed and shaped into where we need to go to. That's why Hebrews 12, 7 says it's so beautiful. It says from verse 6 and 7, he says, the Lord disciplines those he loves. So when you go through discipline, I don't know about you, but I grew up in a home where the belt was still used. My mom used to man, there's no other word. I can use a stronger word, but are we in church? Ek, us, boya, leaf, fur, you. Isn't it so? Discipline is good. Listen, discipline is good. Because it's in the discipline that we actually experience the reality of God's heart. It's not that he's angry. He loves us so much. And he's got a better way for us to live that he's actually inviting us into that life. And that's where John 10, 10, where Jesus said, listen, the enemy comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But I've come to give you life. And then he says it. More abundantly. He's calling us into this abundant life. But when we're disobedient, we cannot walk in that life. And all he's doing is he, the discipline comes. And it just, it just aligns us again in what he's called us to do. Listen to Job 36, 15. God delivers, who I love this. God delivers the afflicted by their affliction. Listen to this, listen to this. And opens their ears by adversity. You see, some of us, are hard of hearing. I mean, in Afrikaans sê ons, man, jou smaak met die was in jou oor, en moet die bykie gesmeld word. We, we, we hard of hearing, isn't it so? And God comes in that situation, and He opens our ears, and He says, come on! 
Come on. I want you to hear my gentle yet firm voice so you can step into what I have for you. Number three, sometimes when we find ourselves in this difficult situation, especially where Jonah found himself in, some circumstances just feel impossible that God can do anything. It's like, man, I, I'm so deep in this. Like he said, listen, the seaweed came around my, my head. I was, I was entangled with seaweed. It seems impossible. Listen, I've seen some stuff in my life already where, where it seems impossible. I've walked into, into wards in, in hospital and into, listen, into relationships and marriages where it just seems impossible, where only God can do this. But yet, He does. When we call upon Him, He does. I love this. I just put it down here. I said sometimes it feels like like our distress and troubles comes in batches. It's, it's, it's sometimes so frequent that we actually, Lord, just give me a gap. Anyone? Just give me a break. I, I know I'm learning something, but Lord, just give me a break. Isn't it so? And when it comes so frequently, then it feels impossible. But through Jonah this morning, we are reminded, that, listen, that our plight and our prayer is not unheard. He hears our prayers. And, and then, then Mark 10, where Jesus says, with men, it seems impossible because let's be honest, some situations look impossible for us, but yet all things are possible with God. Number four, and we don't like this, this one because I need to say to you this, this, this morning is that uh, he's always in time. Uh, I call it the nick of time, but he's always in time. He always, he's always ready to help. He's always there when we're in, in distress, when we pray and we call out to him. I love verse 7 says so beautifully. He says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord in the nick of time. When I was losing consciousness, man, I remembered the Lord. Some translations would say, my life was slipping away. It was in the nick of time. At the 11th hour, God did something different. Habakkuk says this so beautiful. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And will, and, and how long will it take for you to hear me? Because that's how we feel. I need to say to you, God is always on time. He doesn't work according to our clock. And I want to say this emphatically and please hear my heart. Stop dictating to God what he needs to do. I, I can see you. Because a lot of people say, but you've got authority inside of you. Yes, I do. And that's why we pray. That's why we trust God. But stop trying to bend the things because you want it your way. A lot of times we've got to be found in the belly of the fish because God is doing something great, enormous. And we don't like that, but God is always on time. Then number five, God works in stages. Oh my goodness. The first stage for, for Jonah was, you know, being th thrown overboard. And there was, a, there was a fish in the belly of the fish. The fish was, fish was the salvation. It worked in stages. Now he's in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Can I just quickly say to you, God hears our cries. But he comes, there's times that God comes through immediately when we pray and we trust God and we get salvation and there's breakthrough or, or there's provision. But sometimes it takes time. It's in the time that we've got to be patient, in peace, trusting God that he's working it out. In his time, because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. We need to trust God because he works in stages. And I know we don't like that because we live in a world of instant. If I pray now, Lord, you've got to deliver tomorrow morning. And if you don't deliver now, I'm going to be angry. Don't send me to Nineveh. Nineveh. Or to wherever. That's how we feel. You're going to hear next week, you're going to hear next week how, how, how actually Jonah resented. He had a resentment towards God for sending him. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible place to be. But what we need to do, we need to understand is that God works in stages. Number six, God answers our cries and distress in order to win our individual loyalty and thanksgiving. God wants us to be thankful in what He, in what he does for us. Those who who pay, uh, in, in verse, I think it, it was verse 7, 
verse 7 and 8, or 8 and 9. It actually is those who pay regard um, to their vain idols forsake their loyalty. But Lord, I will turn to you. I will turn to you and listen to what he says, with sacrifices and I will do what you've called me to do. It simply means, Lord, I'll be loyal to you and I'm gonna thank you for your goodness and grace towards me. I love this. How do we get into the presence of God? With thanksgiving and praise. Philippians 4, 6 says, a beautiful, bring all your presence, uh, bring, bring, all, uh, bring everything in prayer and supplication unto Lord with thanksgiving. My translation says, says it's so beautiful, for what you have done. Psalm 50, 15 says, says so beautiful, call upon me in, in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. And then finally, finally, listen, God answers our, our prayers in distress so that you and I can become merciful to the people around us. God shows mercy and grace to you and me so that you and I can show mercy and grace to people around us. You see, the one thing that, that Jonah had to learn is that God called him to go to Nineveh. He had to come and make peace with that and to trust God. And so, as I end off, the book of Jonah and what we've, what we've read in, the, in, in, in chapter two is all got to do with grace and mercy. That even in the worst times of our life that we think God does not hear us, He hears us. He is faithful. He is a merciful God. All that you and I need to do is call upon Him. So, I want to pray for people in this house. But you pray just now. No, 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 no. Because some of you think, you really think that God cannot forgive you. You've been in that spot for a long time and there just seems no way out. And I wanna to say to you this morning, he's prepared a way a long time ago, it's done. All that you need to do is call to him. What Jonah did right was calling on God. Maybe this morning, you just need to return to God and call on him and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Thank you that I know that your grace is sufficient. That whatever I found myself in, the bad choices I've made, I can return. And just by the way, for some of you, this message doesn't maybe, it might not just be applicable to you because you're on the mountaintops. But yet you need to hear this because there's a time coming that you're gonna be in the valley, that you need to know that even in the valley, God hears your prayers. But there might be someone, because always when we come to church, we wish that Kurs was in church as well. Isn't it so? Oh, if Kurs can hear this message. So maybe we need to go to the Kurses in the workplace and environments we're finding ourselves in. And if your name is Kurs this morning, I'm so sorry. People are going to listen. They are going to, they're going to evangelize you like never before. You see, we need to hear this stuff so that it can have effect in our lives, so that we can become witnesses of His mercy and grace. And so this morning, I want to extend that invitation to you. Maybe in this house, you're sitting here this morning, and some of you are struggling to break free from your past, something that you, you've made a bad choice, and we all do. And you're saying to me, but Edwin, that's me. I, 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 just, I just simply want to, I just want to break with it. I understand this morning that even in my distress, because when we're in distress, we think that God will not hear our prayers. No, He hears our prayers. And so I want to pray for you. If that's you, be bold this morning. Be bold because it's going to take some guts this morning. But I want you to stand up and say, that's me. Thank you. Anyone else? That's me. That's me. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm not going to prolong this. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. In my distress, in my, in my, in my distress, I'm coming back to you. If that's you, last time, you can get up right now. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to trust God with you. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I ask, if you see people standing, 
that you just turn around and just lay hands on them. Can I just quickly ask there at the back, Jock, Sunek, can you listen to me? Half of me, half of me. I say, thank you. Thank you. All right, come, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I, I pray this morning, Lord, truly, that we will run from this house having this confidence in you. You've paid the price. You've paid it in full. And thank you, Lord, that even in the times that we think that, that you're not hearing us, you are so aware of what we go through. And Lord, I pray right now that truly that your grace will be extended to everyone standing right now. Right now, may your grace, grace infiltrate their hearts, their minds. And Lord, thank you that we can say forgiveness is your portion. You have been forgiven. And we say that not flippantly. We say it with such, such man, a conviction of the Spirit of God because the Word of God says, for there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus called according to His purposes. You are in Christ. And this thing will not condemn you anymore in Jesus' name. And so Father, we pray it. And we trust you like a Jonas. Lord, help us to be reminded constantly that even in the worst times of our life, you are there. You are our salvation. And you will prepare a fish. And you'll get us to the place we, where we need to be. And so we give you all the glory and honor this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.